in this lesson we're going to go over information on digital skills on lesson two how to get to use information resources so in lesson one we already looked at information resources the advantages disadvantages and also the types and also looked at uh, the sources of information we looked at also the kinds of access tools so here we are going to start from first what do we need to understand after this so we need to know by the end of this our aim will be to be able to build a search strategy to improve a search and also familiarize with advanced searching techniques now when performing a literature research, literature research involves finding out what other work has already been done in the field in which you are focusing. For example, you are in the field of medicine. There are already some discoveries which you are made. So you want to find out that information that has already been discovered. So you use literature research. Now, in most cases, the search is a survey of publications and information on a specific topic so you really are interested in finding something about a certain topic because you really can't just know everything about this kind of field you need to have a specific agenda of what you're talking about or what you want to find at the end of it all so unlike literature review which is the written section of your research report uh, summarizing the literature you studied in order to develop the search study a literature research is often simply a list of references so here there's a difference between a literature review and a literature research literature review is when you've already done the research and you get to write down what you found out in a more summarized way now a literature research is often simply a list of references you are simply putting down references of what you have what you found out about Okay. So there are different search strategies for carrying out a literature research. Which search strategies to use many depends on the stage of research. So they they can be simple search, which is bas basic search. They can be systematic search, which is building a query or following a thread that is also called snowballing. Probably you will start with basic search followed by a more advanced or systematic search. When you find some highly relevant articles, you can use them to find out really related articles by following a thread or as a way of improving your systematic search. So you can find out how these types of searches are linked. So first we are going to start with a simple search. And let's say you just want to understand about functions. Of let's say blood, just type this very simple. Now, this is going to get to lead you to some other things. Okay, so if the search is that is what where we are getting now from here, we are saying you are going to simply use a simple search now. After you make that simple search, after you've understood some things on that simple thing, function of blood, that might compel you to go into a more advanced or a more systematic search. And when you get to do that, when you find some more important information, that will be leading you to some other things of which you didn't even search about, but they've taken your attention and you want just to know about them. So that would be now following a thread after you click on this link it takes you to another link that will be following a thread that is called snowballing a simple search refers to the quick and first step search for an online source so google scholar university library catalogs or wikipedia can be the first places to start with you simply get to to search there as you get to search if the literature topic is straightforward and there only is need of a okay and there only is need for a few relevant documents then your search can be restricted to typing in a single 
search term or phrase for example heat shock proteins so you are simply searching about a very simple thing if a reference or part of the bi biographic record is available such as title or journal name you can simply type this information into one of the search engines to get the full biographic information for example when you have got a course outline and you want to understand about a certain subject or even let's say uh, talking about molecular biology and something they want to understand about is meiosis and if you have got a reference you can simply type maybe Kent M you write the reference the year and such and you get to type it together so that the information is going to come directly from that source so this may also be the case when you know what to search for in this case simply type the reference google google scholar or university libraries catalog to get the full text of the publication if you really know what you want to search about instead of just writing a general thing for example just a function of blood for example maybe you you've got a very specific which you need to understand this portion of the function of blood i want to understand it better so that is what you get to type on for the same purpose citation databases such as scopus can be used so this is there to make a citation that is a citation database so you can also use it in in such regard when you're trying to find out some information now a systematic search requires a more comprehensive search strategy you will need to have a complete overview of all the information resources available on the subject this is usually done by a complex piece of search which aims to identify select and synthesize or search published on a particular subject or on a certain topic or a certain question so it consists of identifying search items using boolean operators advanced search techniques and building a query the steps are listed and explained in the following section so we're going to to get to look at that okay how to use the brain search advanced search we're going to look at those but when we are talking about the systematic search you need to understand this one has to be with more understanding because for the one which is on top which is simply a simple search you're not going to more specific understanding so it is simply a general search now a systematic search you want to go into a deeper understanding you want to really understand about something so even the way you get to search you want specific information not just anything that comes okay now following a thread is another search strategy to be considered now this is also called of course snowballing the references listed in your relevant publications lead you to other relevant publications this type of search is very useful for orienting yourself at the start of your project because it will quickly give you related publications these publications can be used to find related search terms for your systematic search and again later to check if you found or related papers so when you're making a research and you already have some reference materials of your research where you need to get your data so you can simply type on this reference researches on the on the access tools or on the search engines and the information is going to come out and you can now come and compare if you've gotten the information that you're supposed to get after you had put on those references so that is following a thread already something is present you are just following it now again we need to understand that we need to focus on the topic even as we get to say so you can start your literature search by collecting background information in order to get an overview on the topic okay so you are going to collect background information background information is very important when you are doing something for the first time okay so to direct yourself to the most important issues and the controversies you don't just start from from the many things you first get the background to understand and then that is going to direct you to the important issues of where you need to go so to gain understanding of how the topic area relates to other topics and to introduce yourself to the vocabulary or jargon related or relating to the topic so that is what we need to have a background information 
because it will give us a relationship of the topic that you are discussing even with other topics. So an encyclopedia would be a good place to start. Newspapers and professional journals are used for familiarizing yourself with current development and opinions. Both books and review articles provide an introduction and overview of various aspects of the topic. They contain more comprehensive information than scientific research papers. So that will give us some overview. So when you get to use a book or even a review article, that is going to give you a more general form about something or general information about something before you get to understand it better to just know the background. Another thing here is after reading some background information, you can begin to narrow your focus. One way to do this is to turn your research focus into a question. Okay. Instead of you just searching, you turn it into a question. And then you are going to follow that question to see what answers can come from that question. And that is going to help you get answers. Okay. So we can start off the four W's plus an H for us to be able to understand. Four W's plus an H. What, where, who, why, and how. So if we get to understand this, we are going to be getting answers there. What? So when you're talking about what? What environmental issues are related to agriculture? Maybe you're talking about agriculture, environmental issues. Okay. If you understand about the environmental issues affected to agriculture, where? Now you understand where are the environmental issues mostly threatening to agriculture? And who are affected by environmental issues in agriculture? Why does the EU subsidize agriculture that promote environmental issues? And how do environmental issues impact agriculture? So you get to understand all this when you are just understanding the impact of it of environmental issues on agriculture. So those questions are going to help us even as we get to make a research. So again, we need to understand the levels of information that we, we even want to get. So researchers need reliable, accurate, up-to-date information for a quality research outcome. Because if you get to use information that is outdated, you might end up just writing something wrong. So you need information that is up to date. And with the information explosion and billions of documents on the World Wide Web, it is hard to find the needle in the haystack. So it is just hard to find the right information that you need. Especially that there is too much information on the just present as at now, especially on social media. So, and to know which source is the best one for, which is the best one for a specific situation, that is also not a very simple thing. Therefore, researchers need evidence to support the claims they make about their research findings. To avoid information malpractice, because you might end up getting wrong information. So, and you might also end up getting information that you're not supposed to get to be more information malpractice. So it's the, a systematic search strategy should be adopted when approaching scientific research. Here are some 10 steps to develop a search strategy. Right questions on each step is also given. So the first thing is ask, state your topic as a question on to focus your search. Ask if your question is too broad or narrow or too narrow. So you need to ask yourself. And when you are searching, search in forms of a question. And the second one is define your information need. Define your information need. Ask what sort and how much information you need. Because as you get to type there, you know that information is going to come, a lot of it. So what kind of information, what type of information do I need? What sort of information do I need? Also identify concepts. Identify the many concepts from your question. That's what are the most important things in the question. Okay, because the question attempts can also be too long because the subject that you're talking about is too long. So you need to narrow it into the many ways. That's why we need to have summary skills. And also select the terms. So select terms which are unique words or synonyms, plurals, and broader topics. That's what 
might be some discipline specific theories, uh, theories. So we need to select the terms which are unique. So just unique words and broader topics. And those are the ones that we are going to use to take our research and that is going to help us. And also select sources. Where are you going to get the information? And you need to select professional sources, not just any sources, especially when you're, not, when you're making this academic research, because not any source that you're going to use is going to have the right information. So ask if you should be, if you use, should use tertiary, secondary, or primary sources. If you need to understand deeper on a certain subject, it's better you understand that you need to use primary sources. But if you you are so quick and you just want some surface information, you can use special resources of information. And after then, you need now to search. So construct a search with appropriate commands for the system selected if you are searching efficiently. Okay. So construct a search with appropriate command for the system. Ask if you are searching efficiently. Is the information coming out as you want it to? Because if you are receiving the wrong information, which you don't want, obviously you are not making an efficient research, so you need to ask yourself that. And you also need to revise. Revise and refine your search. Ask if you, you retrieve all the information that you needed after you have already done the research. Have you gotten the information that you needed? If you did, that is well. And then you need to manage your results if you did get your re your search just successfully. So manage your results, retrieve records with full text, save, print, cite, and email them where necessary. Ask how you can get the full text and how you can use this information in the future. So that will be very important. You need to manage the results. And after you do that, of course after you research, you ask if you've gotten the necessary information. You need to, to get to save the information that you've gotten. And after you've saved your information, now you need to evaluate the information that you've gotten. And evaluating the quality of information, ask if you can trust the information and if the article has been highly cited. So if the, inf if the article that you have used is highly cited or if it is, it, if it is just reliable, then that will be better. Otherwise, you must get information from a wrong source. And then the last one is you now need to apply. So apply and check if you answered your questions or if you still need more information. If you still need more information, then you also need to perform another to get. So 